Waymo stands for a new way forward in mobility, and we've been working on this for eight years. Prior to becoming Waymo, we were the Google self-driving car project. And we have, since the start of that project, put 2.5 million autonomous miles um, on our cars, which is pretty good. And over the last 12 months alone, we've driven about a billion miles in simulation. Um, so the truth is, we're getting better and better at this. It's a really complicated task, but we've been developing, developing our own software. We've been de developing our own hardware, including three different rings of 360 degree sensors, our own LIDAR, our own radar, our own vision systems. And when you put all these things together, we are getting to the point, Phil, where we're becoming quite confident that we can put these cars on the road in the very near future. You're going to start doing some test drives in California, Arizona later this month. How far into the future is it possible that somebody living in Phoenix or in Northern California will be able to be in one of these vehicles? Yeah. Even though it's still a test vehicle, yeah. it will no longer just be your engineers. It'll be mom and pop yeah. who want to see what it's like to be in a self-driving car. Well, the truth is we, we've done that already. Um, back in October 2015, we put one of the friends of our project, Steve Mann, uh, a blind fellow, um, into one of our prototype cars, and he drove through the streets of Austin um, unattended by any other human in a car without a steering wheel or a brake pedal. So we've done that already. The question now and what we're working very hard on is to bring that to millions of people going forward. John, Andrew's got a question back in the studio for you. Sure. Andrew, go ahead. Hey, John, I don't know if you can see this on the screen right now, but we're seeing images of your vehicle uh, with all sorts of sensors uh, on right. it, uh, much more so, uh, frankly, than what you see on some of the new Tesla vehicles, which have an autopilot, which I know is, is not at the same level as what you're doing. but. Uh, how do you look at what Tesla is doing relative to what you're doing? Well, I think that the key thing that you see on our vehicle is a lot of sensors, and that's something we're very proud of. Um, we've got three types of sensing, and we think that is important and essential for the task of full autonomy. 360 degrees worth of LiDAR um, of our own design. 360 degrees of radar coverage, again, of our own design, and a remarkable new sensing suite of vision system um, with a whole lot of camera sensors that give the car, again, a full 360 degree um, view. We do think that level of sensing is required to do a good job, to do a safe job, to do a reliable job at true L4 autonomy. And how much smaller, ultimately, do those sensors have to become? Meaning, will they ever fully be uh, so built into the vehicle that you don't even see them? Yeah, I think that's a great question. It's a question we get a lot. Um, we think in the future, people are going to appreciate the ability to see when looking at a car that it has self-driving capability. And one of the things we're pretty focused on at Waymo is ensuring the safety of those cars. And there's no question with that characteristic dome where we put a lot of our sensing equipment in our cars, that's a great place to have a great view of the, of the, of the view down the road and all the obstacles that the car might see. So um, we think the future of self-driving cars, you're gonna see a lot more of those little bumps and bulges. And those will be good indications to consumers that that's a self-driving car. That's a car that I can trust. And those sensors becoming smaller at the same time, you're bringing down the cost. We are, it's, yeah. it's down more than 90% compared to where it was a year or a year and a half ago, correct? We've worked really hard on the safety of these sensors, Phil, and one of the things we, we've learned is by doing that LiDAR design work and radar design work and vision system design work on our own, we understand the systems well, which means we can more tightly integrate with our software team. It also means we can take cost out, and that's what's gonna help us make this service more accessible to millions. Have we hit the tipping point, though? You've got it down. $7,500 for a LiDAR package per yeah. vehicle. Have we hit the tipping point where people will say, yeah, I want that in my car, or does it still need to come down substantially from there? I think right now, I would say we're maybe halfway there, right? Um, we've taken a lot of design cost out, but we still haven't gotten to mass production scaling volumes, so we've got much more opportunity to take even more cost out, and we're quite confident we can get this to a point where it's accessible to many. And the, the big question, of all, as always, when do we see this in the vehicles we might be able to buy at a dealership or get through a rideshare service? Sooner than you might think. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.